Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live Ninja Trader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good afternoon and welcome to Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. My name is Jim Cagnina with Ninja Trader and it is Monday, October 9th, 2023. Appreciate everybody coming today. Let's go ahead and get started here. Today we're going to talk about the Superdome, the Ninja Trader Superdome. And we're going to go ahead and open up a Superdome and go through all the formatting and um, all of the bells and whistles associated with it because it's a very, very powerful tool. And, um, you know, some folks might not know all the power it has. So let's go ahead and get into the Superdome right away. Um, I'm going to start with my control panel, which is where we always start, right? I'm logged in. I have my green, uh, my green connected uh, 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 symbol up there. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and launch a Superdome. I'm going to go to the new menu in the upper left. I'm going to click and it'll bring down the menu. And I'm going to look for Superdome. I've got a couple. I've got a dynamic and a static. You could have uh, either one if you choose to have uh, a dynamic and static. I'm going to go ahead and pick on the, I'm going to go ahead and select the Superdome static. I'm going to click on it. It's going to open up to the Superdome. And uh, let's take a peek at this. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the uh, control panel on the background. And so we have a nice clean uh, slate here. So what are we looking at here? What, what is the, uh, let's go through the anatomy of a Superdome. Um, in the middle, you know, sometimes the Superdomes are called price ladders or price matrix. And you can see why the price ladder name uh, is kind of handy. Depth of market refers to the, uh, the fact that you can see bids and offers that are already placed at the exchange and it's represented by numbers on the buy column or the sell column. But let's start with the middle. This is the prices, right? This is the E-mini S&P, uh, classic E-mini S&P stock index futures here. And you can see that each increment of, uh, of this ladder is the smallest tick size associated with this market. And it's this market's traded in quarter points. So that's why you see a 0, 0, 0, 0.25, 0, 0.50, 0, 0.75. A full point is four quarters. Um, and um, that's kind of how this particular market is broken up. If we were looking at crude oil, it would be a little bit different. It would be broken up, up into tenths, but it's unique to whatever the market is. And here we have the E-mini S&P. So let's stick with that. So these are prices in the middle. And you can see that there is a clear, clearly highlighted yellow cell in the middle. And that's the price, That's the last trade that happened. That's that's mark to market. That's where, which, that's where the, uh, the last time a buyer and a seller agreed to do a transaction. I know it's electronic. They didn't agree, you know, over the telephone, but electronically trades are matched at whatever price is, is matched. And that's what the market is. So you'll see it's dynamic. It's moving around that, uh, that yellow, uh, that yellow marker. And it's very, very handy so that when you're thinking about what the price of a given market is, you can see it right there, right? It's just, it's just a snapshot, but it's a real time snapshot and streams really quickly. So this is center column here, and you can kind of scroll up or down with your mouse, right? You can roll up, scroll up or down with your set with the roller of your mouse. It's pretty easy to do that um, to kind of move the price ladder up or down. And then you also have this little C button on the lower right, which also stands for centers the last traded price. You can click on that; it'll center the last traded price, right? And you know you could automate this or not, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, the two columns that surround the price on the left-hand side is the buy column, right? This is the buy column. And you can see a whole bunch of numbers here. I have it set up so you can see 10 ticks worth of data below the last, at or below the last traded price. And on the right-hand side is the sell or the offer column. And you can see 10 uh, sets of, of, of data above 
the last traded price. <clears throat> and so that this these are the offers or the ask. Some people call it the ask. This is this is the buy. This is the buy. So it's a bid ask spread or the bid offer spread is the difference between the highest the highest number here on the buy side and the lowest number on the sell side. In other words, the highest number on the buy side is the highest price somebody's willing to pay. The lowest is the is the lowest price somebody's willing to sell. The difference between the two and in this particular market, it's very thick. is 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 one tick apart from the bid ask spread. And sometimes it could be bigger, but mostly it's not. And then other thinner markets, it might be different. But this is the mini S and P, which is widely traded. That's why it's one tick deep. So these numbers represent limit orders that are at the exchange. They've been already sent to the CME Group's Globex exchange in this case. So these are limit orders to buy on the left, and these are limit orders to sell on the right. And you can see they're dynamic. People are adding, uh, adding orders. They're canceling orders. They're cancel replacing orders. And that's why these numbers are moving. Going down to the bottom here, you can see a market order button right here at the bottom of the bid column. If I wanted to buy at the market, I'd click on that button. Then we see our PL, which will, will display our PL once we enter a trade or establish a position. And then on the right hand side, another market button if we wanted to sell a contract at the market. Let's keep moving down here at the bottom. On the lower right is, a, is close. Now, this close is a position. Um, and it also closes open orders. So if you just want to just get rid of everything and hit, just say, hey, I want to get flat and I'd like to also close any orders that are working, you just click on that, uh, that close button right there. And that's how that, how that handles that. On the other side is a reverse button. Let's say we're long account e mini s and and we'd like to go short. Then it would reverse your position. In other words, it would sell two at the market. to one to offset your long position if you had a one lot long position and the second one to establish a short, a short position. And then at the next level down at the bottom is the instrument, right? We could change the market to whatever we want. Right, right here, it's E-mini S&P, December 2023. Uh, uh, and you can simply just type in a symbol if you wanted to change it to something else. It's a smart search. So if you type in a symbol or a keyword, it'll give you some options, right? It'll give you some options. Here's the NASDAQ as an example, micro NASDAQ. And I can see that also just by changing the instrument. Let's go back to the E-mini S&P though, ES. And I am going to double click on it. All right. Um, time and force. I'm going to leave this blank here for now. Um, it's going to be associated with my account type, but you know we're day trading, and um, it doesn't. It doesn't. We don't need to set this. Um, quantity is how many contracts. This is the default quantity, right? And you could change it up or down. And this is how many contracts you would like to trade when you actually click on something, or click on a market order, or establish a limit order. That's your default. On the lower left is your account. Let's go ahead and put an account. I have a few different accounts here. We'll, we'll pick a, we'll choose an account. A lot of times if you don't, you know, the account comes up blank. So a lot of times you forget about it and you start trying to trade and it won't let you because you haven't selected an account. ATM strategies, we're going to cover this a little bit later. This allows you to place automated trades also right here on the trading ladder. So that's kind of the anatomy. The very, very, very bottom, we have a tab E-mini S&P. If I wanted to open, have another tab open here, I could sim simply click on the plus uh, plus button and just pick a different market. So as an example, I could pick, I don't know, the 10-year treasury note market, which is the end. I'll double click on that. And so now I have two different markets and two different tabs at the bottom of my Superdome. Um, alternatively, I could duplicate the window, just right click at the very top, click duplicate, and it'll open up another trading ladder. You could have two trading ladders side by side. You don't have to have one. If you prefer to look at two different markets at the same time, side by side, uh, depending on the real estate you have on your computer monitor, this is particularly convenient. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, close this out and let's play some trades. All right, let's just demonstrate the buying at the market, right? So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click on the market. I got one contract set for the SIM account one. And I want to buy, I just want to buy, a, I just want to send an order to the exchange to, uh, for a market order to buy a contract. I'm going to click on that and then uh, it triggers a immediate response and I have bought one at the market. Now, you could see at the bottom here, this green highlighted area means I am long, right? I bought one. I expect the market to go up and I'm hopefully I'm going to take profit once that market goes up. Alternatively, if the market goes down, I'm going to take a loss. Now, if I were short, this would be red. This would be red. So it's kind of color coded. It gives you a good idea of what you're doing. And my contract size here is one, right? So again, it matches my default. 
I'm long one. Now, what would happen if I would if I wanted to buy another one at the market? Well, I just go ahead and hit that market button again. And it would buy a second one. And you can see it's still green. I'm still long. But I have a two here, right? Because I bought a second contract. So I'm long two now. And my average price came down a little bit, right? Again, this is that average price. This dark, well, we're, we're, the market's covering it right now. But when the market is done covering it, you'll see it's a brown uh, rectangle. And that, and that shows what my average price is. If I have one contract, well, it's no average. It's just the price that I actually bought the contract at. But now I have... Um, now I have uh, two. Now the bottom column here shows how many <clears throat> shows what your PL is, and you can display it with a lot of different ways, right? You could display it on uh, points or dollars or ticks. I'm just gonna you just click on it, just click at the bottom, and it will change that display to whatever format you want to see as your trade is open, right? This is an open trade, so it's not going to say flat. It's not going to say anything. It's going to say the number. My uh, my mark to market. Uh, uh, unrealized PL, right? Which means, hey, Jim, if I get out of this trade at 39 even, right, then I'm going to, I'm going to have lost, uh, well, it would have, it was $75, but now we keep going down lower and lower. So this tells you what exactly, you know, based on where the market price is, um, what's your, uh, what's your anticipated PL is if you closed the position at that given price. And you can see it's moving around as the market moves around. This is my, Unrealized PL on this trade, gross PL on this trade. All right. So now the opposite is equally true. I could just hit this market but order button here and it will literally uh um, send, send an order out to get, you know to to sell at the market, but I only have a quantity set at one. So I'm gonna change it to two. We'll send it to two, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit this. This will close out this trade for a loss. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that market button. And it's sold to at the market. And so now uh, I'm flat, right? I have nothing else going on. Now, when you do this, remember, if your default is one, change it back to one. Don't forget to change it back to one. Um, so I'm going to change it back to one. Those are market orders. That's how a market order works. So let's talk about the next type of order. Let's talk about a limit order. And a limit order is, uh, is, is by definition, is I, want, I would like to either buy or sell at my price or better. That's the definition of it. So as an example, if I wanted to buy a contract at 43, uh, 37 half, I would go ahead and click in the buy side. I would click in the buy side. And now I have a limit order. And now I'm behind 120 other contracts. Remember, at the CMA group, it's first in, first out. But what I'm telling, what I'm telling the exchange is, hey, if this market comes down to 37 and a half or 37.50, I would like to buy a contract uh, at that price. And once trading gets closer to me, I'm in the back of the line now, remember, but once I get closer to me, then I'll have a chance of getting fill. The market can't go below me without giving me a fill. By definition, it can't. So we can't print a 37.25 without me getting filled at 37.50. Now we can do the same thing on the short side. Let's say, well, you know what? I want to sell a contract. If we get to 41 even, 43.41, I click in the sell column and there's my order. Right. And it's right there. It's in the order book, you know, order, order ticket, order ID ticket is there. And I'm just waiting. So now I have an order to buy a contract and an order to sell a contract at the same time. That's completely, completely legitimate, completely uh, reasonable trade idea based on whatever your technical analysis is. Now, don't follow home blindly at home. I'm just these are sample trades just for explanation purposes on how the how the Superdome works, okay? Depth of market, Superdome, trading ladder. Um, now, <clears throat> maybe I want to change my prices, right? You know what? I think I'd rather, I don't think I'm going to get to 41 even. I think 4050 is more reasonable. I'm just going to click and click and that cancel and replace that order that quickly. Canceled and replaced that order. And now I'm in line at 4050 instead of being in line at 41. Right, so a two a two tick differential. I could do the same thing at the bottom here, right? I could just click and click, and it again cancels and replaces my order to a different price, right? So I so that's really easy, really nimble, and it really allows for precision in your trading because now you can see tick for tick where you want that where you want that order. Now the other thing I could do is stuff like change the sizes, right? The limit orders. I got a one here. I could just click on the one and change it to a two contract. Uh, uh, order, right? So now I'm saying, hey, I'd like to sell two at 40.15 instead of just one at 40.15. As an example, I could do the same thing at the bottom here as well. 
I can just click on that and just change the number to whatever I want, hit the check button, and I am good to go. Remember, this close all button, I'm going to click on it. Should I? I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on this close button. It'll cancel both these orders. Starting from scratch. Okay, makes sense. Let's go back and put a let's go back and put one in here. I want to get closer. We'll go to 39. We'll get to we'll see if we can get the 39s filled. Limit orders in. Got filled right away. Here's my position. It's long, right? And now what I want to do is I want to put a profit target in, right? Because I think the market's going to go up, right? So I want to put the profit target in. What should I choose? I'm going to choose 30. 43.42. And again, this will be a sell, right? Because I'm long one. I want to sell it back at a higher price. So I'm going to click here and throw a limit order in at 43.42. Um, pretty, uh, uh, pretty easy to do. Now I want to put a stop loss too. And it's going to be a sell stop, right? So a stop loss is the third uh, part of the trade. And I'm going to put it in at 43.38, but I'm going to use my middle mouse key to put it in. I'm going to select the, uh, the the size of contracts. I'm going to hit the check button. And now I have that stop in. So I have a limit target on the top. My position is at 39 even. The price of the market is at 39.50 and moving around. And not only that, keep in mind, I could also change the price of the stop just by clicking and clicking to a different price, right? So it's really easy, really nimble, click and click to move things around. So I just manually put a simple bracket around this particular market. And we could automate this too, which we'll try a little bit later on uh, today in the presentation. By the way, I have with me today, I forgot to mention this, this is very important. Uh, Ed Jerkin is with us behind the scenes. Uh, so if you have questions, anything related to NinjaTrader, it doesn't have to be just about the trading ladder or what kind of plant I have over my shoulder. Feel free to ask uh, Ed. He's in the chat right now. The chat's easy to find, ninjatrader.com forward slash events. Just go to ninjatrader.com forward slash events, and uh, you'll be able to just create a handle and go ahead and type in any kind of questions or comments that you might have. Appreciate Ed for being here with me today uh, as we are discussing the NinjaTrader uh, Superdome. All right, so we're going to speed up this trade a little bit. I'm going to just start trailing my stop up and um, see if we can get stopped out really quickly because then there's another important thing you have to do. I'm stopped. I'm flat. I want to cancel that order. I clicked on the X to cancel it. I clicked on the X to cancel it. All right, let's go through some properties. Now, let's, let's customize this a little bit. Let's make this cooler than it is, if that's possible. I'm going to right-click in this white menu here. You can right click in NinjaTrader and it's very intuitive. Uh, menus and sub menus appear. I right clicked and I have this sub menu. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to look at properties, right? I'm going to look at properties and it's going to open up a dialog box with all sorts of properties on it. Now, right away, what the very first property here is how much depth would you like to see? The default is 10. In other words, we see limit orders 10 ticks below the last traded price on the bid side and 10 ticks above the last traded price. On the offer side, I could change this number to whatever I'd like. Let's go ahead and just change it to 15 for now. Oopsie, 15 for now. And so it'll change it from 10 to 15. So now I'll see 15 different levels, right? So that's kind of the first thing. Um, now, the second thing I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna check, um, I wanna go down and say, show cumulative delta. Del I'm sorry, show cumulative depth, right? And what this will do is it'll just sum up all the bids for all of these 15 that I've selected and all the offers for all the 15 that I've selected. And it'll sum them all up at the top so you can see if there's an imbalance on the bids versus the offers. So that's the second thing I am going to uh, uh, change. Um, middle mouse button is stop market. This is also, I'm going to change that. Remember when I used my middle mouse button to create that stop order, and then I had to select a, uh, a number of contracts and hit a checkbox? Well, this is going to make it so that if I just use my middle mouse button, I won't have to do any of that. The order will go in automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to have that uh, checked as well. And let's keep moving down here, though. There's other, all sorts of different options you could customize this uh, with. But I'm going to show daily high-low markers. In other words, this will show when I get to the high price of the day or the low price of the day. I'm going to check on that. And then I'm going to change the color uh, of my bid column, right? Right now, my 
My buy column background is Gainsboro, which is looks like it's gray to me. We're going to go with orange, right? We're going to click it and make it orange. And um, I think that's how I'm going to customize it. There's all sorts of other options here you could go through and you could change all this stuff, but we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to hit apply. And I want to hit OK. And there we have it. So as you can see, we're at the high of the day. We have another color on our trading ladder. It's green. That means we're at the high of the day. We're bumping off that high of the day. Remember that gap that went all the way up to 45, I think, today? Maybe that's where we're going. I don't know. But column is orange. And then at the bottom of the bid column, you can see we have a big number, 15,051. And it's moving around as price moves around. That just adds up all of these bids in this on the dome. The same with the offer at the top. Offer at the top is just accumulating all this data. Remember, I added... I added some extra data points here. Instead of 10, we have 15. So that's kind of the changes I made. Now let's kind of, let's go ahead and uh, uh, put another limit order in if we can really quickly. Um, I just want to, well, we'll just go to market. We'll get, we'll go to market. And so now I'm long one and I want to put a sell stop in. Let's see the difference in behavior when, after I check that market. I'm just going to use my, my middle boss button and boom, that stop is automatically in, right? I didn't have to change the quantity. I didn't have to hit a checkbox. It's just automatic. It's single click. So if you don't like single click for stops, don't change that. But if you do like it, it's certain. It's certainly it's certainly convenient. And so let's go ahead and just put a profit target up here real quickly. Again, using my limit order tool, I'm just going to click, and there it is. Um, and we can see right now the anatomy of the trade. I'll move my stop to break even. You can see how trade management is really easy with this. How you could be very dynamic with this particular approach or not. And um, as the market's going to get filled, that gap is officially filled, I think, folks, from early this morning, if you are following uh, the drama early on. So we'll go ahead and just tighten this up so we can stop out because there's a lot more properties I want to show you. A lot more things in the order book here that we could really uh, uh, that could really come to light. <clears throat> in the meantime here, there we go. All right. We're starting from a blank screen. All right. Now... Let's add, let's add um, a tick by tick volume profile onto this actual trading ladder, onto the Superdome. I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go ahead to columns. I'm going to add a column here. I'm going to click on columns and I have four available up here. So I'm going to click on volume. I'm going to double click on volume. It's going to bring that available down to configured. I want to make sure that in the configured it's highlighted gray, which it is which gives me the ability to go to the property section and able to customize uh, my look and feel here for my volume. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to check this uh, under visual. It says show volume text. See, that says show volume text. I'm going to check that. And the only other thing I'd really customize is the, um, the type. I have standard or you could have buy and sell, which just color coats the histogram bars between red and green. I'm going to stick with standard. That's good enough in Intel for me. And I'm going to hit apply and OK. And now we see this volume column, column starting to populate with data. Um, and you can scroll down. And it's literally, this is the order flow volume profile tick for tick in the ladder. Since we're at the highs of the day, there's not a lot of volume at any given price point. But you can see the volume at any given price point as it accumulates. Um, throughout the day. So that's particularly helpful. Some, some uh, traders like to use it, some don't. Um, now, another thing, another really quick tip here is um, we're going to add some more columns, but I want to right click and see how it says auto center at the top. Remember, we were down here at the properties before, but see how it says auto center. I'm going to uncheck it. Now it'll give me the ability to scroll down as far as I want or scroll up as far as I want. And I'm using the, the, the center mouse button to do that, right? Using the center mouse button to do that. We have our high watermark here. We have the mar the price of the market, or what the market's doing right here. We have a volume column in here, but let's add another column. Let's add another column. So before we do that, I'm gonna sell one at the market. I just click that market a button there and sell. And you can see there's my PL, there's my position color coded red and I'm short one contract. So I'm going to add another. I'm going to add another column, though. We could do this. Let's add another column, and I'm going to add PL. 
This seems like a good thing to do. Double click on PL, make sure profit and losses uh, is highlighted down and configured, and then uh, check out what, uh, what our options are. You know, really the main option here, other than the color coding, is um, how do you want to display your PL and currencies, percent, pips, points, ticks? We'll just leave it at currencies for now, and I'm going to hit apply and OK. And so now I have another column here. And by the way, you could easily make this uh, enlarge the, the width of your trading ladder. Now I have another column here called PL, and I'm short one contract, right? And what this does is this is really good because my position here, I'm short right here at 43, uh, 43 and three quarters. And you can see I go all the way across here. It says my PL is zero, right? So if I got if I bought one back at this price, my, my PL would be zero. But if I if I if I if I bought you know if I bought it back here it would be twelve fifty. Um, if I bought it back at forty three twenty five it would be twenty five dollars. So each tick increment is twelve dollars and fifty cents. And this is just telling telling me, hey Jim, if you get out at these various prices, here's what your your gross uh, uh, P and L is for this particular trade. Make sense? Now I want to put a stop loss in, obviously, right? So I don't have a profit target in yet, but I'd like to put a stop loss in. And since I'm short, I want to buy it back. So it's going to have to be a buy stop above the market. And I'm just going to click at, at the area that I want. Remember, I set up single click for this. And now I have a stop. Now, the other part, the other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to put a target, uh, a profit target in, and I'm going to pick a price randomly. Don't follow at home alive um, and don't follow in a live account at home randomly. I'm going to go ahead and hit that hit that uh, limit order into buy. Again, I could I could trail. I could uh, move my target if I'd like. And then I could see my PL on the right hand column. So again, pretty useful here. Um, and not only that, we could see some volume uh, nodes starting to develop. You know, some prices are more popular than other prices, as an example. Um, you got some, you know, some of these volume numbers are in uh, quadruple, four digits. Some of them are in triple digits. Um, so you can kind of see how price happiness forms over a period of time. I could continue to, again to, to uh, chase my, uh, or, or I should say trail, no, no more trail necessary. Our profit target was achieved and I'm going to cancel this. Now, every once in a while, if you forget you have a trade uh, uh, order that's in the order book, just, just hit this close button on the lower right. That's all. Notice my PL disappeared because I don't have a position anymore, right? I'm flat. Once I establish a new position, it'll show up again. So let's, we're not, we got more stuff. We got more cool stuff we could do here. Let's, um, let's add some indicators to this, right? Let's add some indicators to this. In particular, I'm interested in where uh, uh, VWAP is, volume weighted average price. So I'm going to right click again and I'm going to see indicators. Uh -huh. I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up uh, a window. And on the left-hand side, I have all the available indicators that I could add um, to my trading ladder. It's going to be a color-coded thing, right? So let's go ahead and pick order flow v volume weighted average price. So I'm just going to double-click that. It'll populate it down to the configure section. I'm going to make sure it's highlighted. And then I want to talk, I want to color code them a little bit, right? Uh, just, a, just a little bit. So um, again, this is VWAP. Um, and I'm going to, I use a 10 minute chart. So I'm going to make that 10 uh, days back uh, uh, load uh, data based on, you can do days. Um, I have it set for two, but it's, it's VWAP. So it doesn't matter. But for other types of indicators, this does matter. Actually, we'll do a demonstration for simple moving average. Um, I do want to calculate on price change. So under setup, calculate on price change. I'm going to keep scrolling down here. And I want to change some colors, right? I always like to have the VWAP purple. So I'm going to make the VWAP purple. And then the first standard deviation band is going to be, um, well, we can color code them differently than the second and third de deviation band. And if you don't even want to see the third deviation band, we can we could actually um, uh, hide them. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and change the first standard deviation band to a little bit of a lighter blue, right? A little bit of a lighter blue. Second standard deviation bands are going to be uh, the darker blue. And remember, they're standard deviation bands around the VWAP. And then if you want to highlight, if you want to hide the last one, you just pick transparent, right? That's that's one easy way to do it. Or you could just change it to, to uh, uh, standard deviation bands from three to two. We'll do that. We'll do it that way. That's the cleaner way to do it. 
So now it's just going to show these two standard deviation bands. It shouldn't show the third one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and OK. And there it is. So it's you can see that that blue line up there. This is the upper standard deviation band. You can see that dark blue line up there. And that's telling me where that's at. If I scroll down, you'll see the lighter one. And then eventually you'll see VWAP, which is down here. So volume weighted average price, the uh, first standard deviation band, the second standard deviation band, and the third one we didn't show. We took off the third one. So again, it helps me kind of visually to know where am I at, you know, especially when I'm crossing the, the actual volume weighted average price today. Today seems to be a trend day up so far. We'll see, knock on wood. But when I see this, this is more important to me than any of the other ones. When we cro start crossing these with some sort of velocity, it could suggest possibly a direction change in the marketplace. So I'm going to center the action again. So let's go ahead and add one more. Let's go, let's go ahead and add, um, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to indicators again. And let's just add a simple moving average. Double click on simple moving average. And then I'm going to go over to my uh, properties window. I don't know, we'll call it, I don't know if a 14 period is good, but we'll just call it, um, we'll do a, I mean, I'm thinking out loud here. We'll do a 14 period moving average. And um, it's going to be based on last. It's going to be based on a 10 minute chart, right? Um, I'm going to change this to bars, load data based on bars. And since I'm looking for a 14 period, um, you know, I'm going to change this to, I don't know, 200 just to be safe. That should be enough bars. I'm thinking out loud. I think it would be enough bars um, to calculate it and then calculate on price change. Calculate on price change. Lastly, we got to get a color in here. Um, let's think about, let's do green. We haven't used green yet, right? We'll do use green. Now, this is going to be my simple moving average on 10 minute data with the 14 period. Of course, you could make it a 20 period, you know, whatever period you'd like for your simple moving average. I'm going to hit apply and OK. And I'm just going to look for that green. There it is. Here, it's right here 4331 even. That is my simple moving average on a 10 minute chart. And when you hover your mouse, mouse over it, it tells you, right? It tells you what it is. It's kind of smart that way. So remember that. Um, again, I'm going to center the action. All right. So we have um, volume, PL, moving averages, VWAP on the trading ladder. We color coded our buy column orange. Go an Ninja Trader. Let's go ahead now and do a, uh, an OCO account. Let's say I wanted to do an automated trade, right? Um, a simple bracket is an example. At the very bottom here, there's a thing called automated trade uh, uh, management, uh, ATM strategies, right? Advanced trade management strategies. And I could use the drop down box to pick something that I've already created, or I could do a custom. I'll do a custom for this particular example here. And uh, again, uh, quantity is one. Right. And this is just going to be a simple bracket. Parameter is in ticks and we'll set a stop loss. Again, this is going to be relatively random. So keep this in mind. Um, we'll set it at eight. We'll set a profit target at eight. And we could, um, I'm sorry, Jim, eight is this. Eight looks like that. Looks like a snowman. We've got another eight in there. And then the stop strategy is none. I could add, I could add a trail stop and all that stuff. But that's kind of going into another uh, another uh, show that we're going to do later on. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to I want to you know I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sell sell a market, sell a contract at the market. You can see that uh, two trades automatically are have been populated into my trading ladder. We have a sell stop up here. We have a profit target down here. And since this goes all the way across. All the way across, it's a visual reminder to remind you is that hey, we uh, this is this is automated, right? This is an uh, order cancels other. So if I get stopped out, the target will automatically cancel. If I got my profit target, hit my profit target first, the stop automatically cancels, right? So it's particularly helpful um, for many reasons. But um, you could always also keep in mind I could change my prices, right? I could click and click. The bracket instructions survive. Um, but I changed my stop uh, level to 41 even. Again, just click and click. 
and you can move things around pretty easily. It makes sense. Again, any questions, shoot them into Ed <clears throat> back at Mission Control, and he will be happy uh, to cover them with you. So going over a lot of ground today, um, pretty much we've covered every major part of this um of the Superdome. Now, some people just like to keep it simple, right? But remember, right-click opens up menus, right? Opens up menus when you right-click. And again, I would I would recommend experimenting with it uh, in simulated live mode. The columns uh, here will open up a new dialog box for columns that's in the middle of that drop, uh, that pop-up menu. Uh, indicators, again, uh, will pop up here. And then there's other types of information. Properties is way at the bottom as well. So uh, keep that in mind. And then when you right click on the top, you can duplicate the window. Easy peasy, makes sense, right? Again, I'm gonna go ahead and just trail my stop and see what happens here at the very last trade of our session. We do have some stuff coming up here because I wanna I want actually get a fill so you can see the order cancel here in a second. So we're gonna get that. Uh, we are going to get, that's going to happen, right? It's going to happen, maybe. Be patient here, Marcus. All right, let's do it this way. Let's let's just kind of move. Oopsie. Let's get our let's get our stop closer. Let's get our stop closer. And of course, you know, this is sim mode. Trades are all going my way. I should like randomly make trades in the future. Uh, let's see if we can get a little. There we go. Stop, get hit. The profit target automatically canceled. Really, really easy peasy. Now down at the bottom, I still have custom, right? So if I want to get out of custom, I'm just going to click and put none, right? I'm just going to click and put none. One other tip while we're at it, while we're at it, I have custom at none. I'm going to go ahead and go long. I just bought one at the market. Now I want to add an OCOA after the fact. Well, I just hit that right, right click in that white column here. And then I turn on OCO, order cancels other. I select my profit target first. Remember that, select your profit target first. And then I'll put my stop in second. And now this will behave like an OCO also. Make sense? And you can just verify it, right click, and you'll see OCO is checked. Whew. All right. Um, appreciate everybody coming today, uh, being here with us at Ninja Traders Platforms Unleashed. We do this every Monday, and we have a whole series of more of these that we're going to continue to do. I do want to remind everybody that um, we have bars closing this afternoon at 3.15 with Tom Schneider. Um, and um, tomorrow... We have a uh, special guest on See the Futures, Bob Iacchino. We're going to be talking about energies, PPI, CPI, and um, all things related to the weekend's events. And then we have, um, uh, there we go. My order got filled. The OCO kicked in. And notice ATM strategies at the bottom is still none, right? So again, the next time it's it's turned off, right? That, so that was a one, a one uh, well, now I have it on again. So now I'm going to turn it off. Right click again, turn it off, and now I don't have any OCO capabilities. Um, Thursday, we have um, Tom Schneider is going to be back with Anthony Crudelli at 1030 East Coast time. Um, develop your edge. Looking forward to that show. So we still got a lot more work to do, including the opening range and bars closing shows that are um, we do every morning and every afternoon. So I appreciate everybody coming today. And I do want to remind everybody, most important message of the day, please be safe out there. Be good to each other. See you soon.